Hello, my name is Kyle Stallings. I'm here uh, with Mr. Lanny Cannon at the beautiful Griffin Pilot House here at the museum owned by the Spring Creek County Historical Association here in Tomball, Texas. And we're assisting with a new project that the museum has going on in connection with the Tomball Branch Harris County Library and the college, Tomball College, to record as much of the video history as we can of some of the older Tomball residents. So thankfully Mr. Cannon has uh, agreed to join us this morning. Uh, could you state your full name for us, Mr. Cannon? My name is Lanny Cannon, Lanny Ross Cannon. And wh when were you born? Born September the 16th, 1936. We had a good family life. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Yeah. That's the way it was. Yeah. I'll tell you a little story, too. Good. When they had so much problem with him, with all that bleeding and everything, and it was during the war, and you couldn't hardly get gas or tires. Yeah. And uh, the... Uh, Mayor of Tomball here back in them days, he was uh, had a little filling station up in town there. Is his name Ferris? Ferris, well, uh, yes, it yeah. was. Uh -huh. And he had the old type pump pumps that you fill up the, they'd hold 10 gallons, I think, and you pumped it in there, and then you just free flowed it out of there. Into your car. But yeah. Mr. Ferris told him, said, uh, Preacher, said, if you ever need gas, take that boy to the doctor. You just stop by here and fill your car up, because he said, I don't lock, I don't lock this pump. Wow. So well, that's what it was back in them days. I don't know exactly how they met, but my daddy was about little, nearly 10 years older. My mama, when they got married, my daddy was 25 and she was 15. Mm -hmm. Of course, back in them days, 15-year-old girl was a whole lot different than a 15-year-old today. Yeah. She would already had to do a lot of work. Well, we, we, when I, right after I was born, for the first 10 years or 11 years of my life, we lived in what was called the poor boy camp. And uh, here in Tomball, the humble camp. You had the poor boy camp, and then you had the upper camp. We always called it the upper people with money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you had the upper and lower camp, and I've heard it, but the lower camp, y'all call it the poor boy camp. Poor boy camp. Yeah, good. It, that's the way the houses were. Poor boy houses. Yeah. That's how I broke my arm. How'd that happen? I hope well, dead in. Mr. Clipper and all of them was out there talking, and I was out there listening to them. And the little old Shetland pony come up, walking up there, and I hopped on that Shetland pony and had my arms stuck back. And about a little while later, here come a whole bunch of horses running by, and about that time, that Shetland pony took off, mm -hmm. and I fell off backwards like that and <coughs> broke the storm right here. How'd you get it fixed up? They took me to Conroe. Conroe? It, back then you had to go to Conroe a lot? Conroe or Houston. Yeah. You didn't have anybody here that could do it. Did y'all have areas where all y'all kids would play? Oh, yeah. well, we played all over that place. Yeah. Got in trouble all over that place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That uh, me and my youngest brother was sitting out there one we were throwing rocks down toward the ha two Havard boys, R.A. Havard and Clinton Havard. And my dad had to come around the corner when one of our, I don't know whether I threw it or my youngest brother threw it, but it hit one of them in the head and he was crying. And mm -hmm. My dad had to come around the corner and about the time they started crying, and we got in a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. I remember one thing that always stick my mind and that's the day they declared the end of World War II. It was right behind our house was a, uh, we called it the fire station. I, I don't know how it would have worked, but it was, they had a siren and everything and they, they, they 
turn that siren on all day long when that war ended. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that, and I'll never forget uh, the people that lived kind of catty corner from us. I was over at their house when when the MPs come to tell them one of their boys had got killed. Oh, that's sad. And uh, I'll never forget that. Yeah. That's how, yeah. where I learned how to swim. I'm, Oldest, two oldest brothers, they had a little pier thing out there, and Dugan just threw me in and said, so I started dog paddling. Yeah. I learned how to swim out there. You had to sink or swim, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I remember one time, Daddy and Mama had to go somewhere, and they give me a quarter, and I walked all the way from the poor boy camp up to the I can't remember the people that owned that little store up there off of uh, 149 and get candy. You can get a uh, one of those uh, baby roots was about that long for a nickel. Ah, oh, that's pretty good. But anyway, one time too, of it, they left me some money and I went and bought a watermelon for a quarter, and I took that watermelon down to. Uh, the Clippers, and I sold it to them for 50 cents. And I went back and bought me two watermelons, and I kept on till I had 12 watermelons. Wow, big business. And I started sitting out there, and I just started busting them watermelons and eating the heart out of them. <laughs> that's when I got real sick. Of course, back in them days, they called it yellow jaundice. Mm -hmm. Nobby's the barbershop come along, matter of fact, I was getting my hair cut there when my first one was born, and I told him that I was fixing to have a football team. Yeah. And he said, no, you know how Nobby talked. Oh, yeah. No, he, he was real slow. And he bet me that it'd be a girl, and I forget what the bet was, but he won, I lost. Yeah. He ended up having cheerleaders instead of the football team. <laughs> Mr. The, the old older Mr. Bradigan. He was a character. <laughs> what do you remember about him? Well, uh, main thing I remember about him, my mom and daddy started a cleaning shop right across the street. Mm -hmm. And uh, he called over there one day and of course the name of the shop was Cannon Cleaners. Mm -hmm. And he asked Mama, called over and he said, do y'all clean shotguns? <laughs> she said, heavens no, we don't seem clean shotguns. How do you ask that? And he said, well, you said you can't clean cannons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a good sense of humor, huh? Yeah. Well, Daddy went to work for the Umber Company, him and his, his one of his older brothers, they were down in Baytown, and uh, old, or old Pelly, they called it back in them days. I think they still do, but they, when it got, there was a line of men hiring out, trying to hire out, so they got in that line, and they, they went in, they hired them, filled out the work and everything, and they put them in the back of the truck, hauled him off to the rig, and Daddy asked his uh, brother, said, who, who are we working for? <laughs> <laughs> and he worked for him for 38 years. Yeah. <laughs> when you were really young, do you remember you and your brothers and sisters, did y'all have any games or toys that y'all liked to play? <laughs> Whatever you got. I was telling my grandson one time, you, nowadays you give kids all these, to, you, they might open up 15 packages for Christmas. When me and my youngest brother, one year we got a basketball together, one basketball. Mm -hmm. Now, Mama would get us a shirt or two or something like that. Yeah. But. 
play, toys to play with. You didn't get you didn't get all of it. Well, they couldn't afford all that money. Yeah. It was just daddy working and mama wasn't working at that time. Yeah. And so you you appreciated what you got. It was I didn't start really into in many sports until I got in about this uh, junior year. And the reason I got into it, we had a coach named Lester Gregg. And he was a basketball coach, good basketball coach. And he was come up to being sixth period one day and, I was, and said, you need, you need to go out for basketball. So y'all worked more than you got to play back then, it sounds well, like. Well, I, I played, like I say, I played two years of basketball yeah. and one year of football. Wasn't very good in football. It wasn't that great in basketball. Year I got to work a year for the Humble Company, and uh, worked out. Our boss, my boss, was Mr. D. D. Dindy, and uh, worked on gang truck. Went around, did did all kind of work that any of the rest of them would do. Yeah, and. Uh, but I didn't. I couldn't get on with Umber Company because you had to have at least two years of college before they'd even talk to you when I come along. Yeah. So I ended up. Matter of fact, what is today? December the fifteenth. Yeah. December the fifteenth, nineteen fifty-eight. I went to work for Brown Oil too in Houston on Katy Freeway. Mm-hmm. And then later on. Uh, Hughes Tube Company bought us out. What'd you do for them? Well, I started off, I was just uh, cutting, had a, working in the raw material area, cutting material. And then later on, I moved into back up to the office and my boss passed away, and so I took his job. And uh, I was over the uh, raw material area and over at the warehouse. And then I ended up doing most of the purchasing for them, but I worked for them for 37 years. Wow. Mostly there in Houston? And, well, Houston, then my last five years they moved us to Huntsville. Oh, but you were still living here? No, no. Oh. I moved up. I, we built a home up on Lake Livingston. Mm. Matter of fact, all all my family, my, my brothers and sister, all of us graduated from Tombo, mm -hmm. except my oldest brother. Now he quit school in the tenth or eleventh grade. What he go do? He um, he company. ended up making more money than any of us did. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I first went to work over at Lewis's, I like to say I was maybe fourteen years old, and those cans of milk weighed close to a hundred pounds. Yeah. And old Junior, Junior Lewis, uh, that's Mr. Lewis's boy. He let he let me go about a week. He I struggled to get those cans up in there, eating me up. And he come in there one day and he said, "Let me show you how you do this. And you could take that can and swing it between your legs and get a little motion to it, and it wasn't nothing to put it up there then." Ah, uh, yeah, I was. Me and John Young and Alan Mark were with him when he got his jaw broke. Uh-oh. How'd that happen? Well, we were working on a, uh, Danny Zock's cave that he was going to have for the fair, and we, we were going to castrate him. And I had the, I had the head and front leg holding like this, and uh, John was somewhere, and Alan Mark was supposed to be holding the back leg. Mm. And uh, somehow or another, Alan let loose of it. And when he did, that calf come up and caught Mr. Parker right in the jaw, broke mm. his jaw. Wow. And it was quite a day. <laughs> Dangerous work back then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now, that bull later on got kind of mean. Matter of fact, we 
we were building a hay barn out and then here and then right over here was our where we kept the lots where we brought the cows in to bring them in to milk. Well, we never had, we got through milking and we were working out there, but we never had to let the bull out of the lot. Well, my youngest brother was down and we said, man, go let that bull out of that lot. Well, he walked in there and that bull caught him and threw him over that fence. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember the first car you had? First car I ever had? Yeah. The first car I actually owned was a, a six-cylinder Ford. It's a 19, what, 50 or something like that. But, and it was so, if you wanted to pass somebody, you better have at least five miles clearance. <laughs> That's how sluggish that thing was. I was playing for Mr. Lewis on this front 20, 25 or 30 acres, and uh, first of all, he come out there and told me, I, I went to lunch and he took, was going to plow while I was gone. I come back and then he come back out there and he said, I've lost my billfold. And Mr. Lewis carried quite a bit of money in his billfold. He wanted me to start plying backwards everything we had plowed. I said, Mr. Lewis, let's look a little bit first. And uh, I don't know, I was walking through there and I saw about that much of that billfold sticking up. Mm -hmm. And I found that billfold. He had $800 in that billfold. Wow. But uh, then he come out there one time and I still plowing in another field. So let me take you to lunch. We went out to Goodson's. And that was, a, that lady made a, she, that round steak was that big, it covered the whole plate and mm. covered with french fries. You know how much it cost? Mm -mm. One dollar. One dollar. You remember the first TV your family got? Yes, I do. When, what kind it was, was that? It was a Philco. Philco? Had a picture about that big. Was it black and white? Black, oh yeah, yeah. black and white. We, yeah. I was a senior in high school. Yeah. First, fit, first TV we got. Daddy went to bed at dark. Yeah. And I can still hear him. We'd be in there and have it cut down so low and trying to watch it and cut that thing off in there. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I guess he had to go to bed early if he's getting up milking cows or yeah. taking care of. Well, that was before we ever even started but he got up early. He would always get up early and run his go gauge his tanks and everything ah, real early, even before right. he wasn't supposed to go to work at seven o'clock. But he might go out when it was real hot. Mm -hmm. He'd start doing that five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and where he could, he'd be through and back up the house and taking him a nap at noon. Yeah, good. Uh, one of the farm bosses had come along one day and caught him. He was up the house taking a nap. And he told him, said, Preacher said, after all, you hired out to work eight hours a day. And Daddy said, like hell I did. I hired out from can to can. When I went to work, you worked from day daylight to dark. Yeah. He said, when I catch up on my sleep, I'll let you know. <laughs> Why'd they call him preacher? That's, I've been asked that question a many a time. And the only thing I can figure out is mom and daddy were members of the Shiloh Baptist Church down there out of Baytown. And daddy had been ordained a uh, deacon. He was ordained deacon. And I, that's the only reason I know, because Diddy didn't talk that much to, but that's all they, everybody knew him by was Preacher Cannon. Okay. Dad still had that old Hudson, and he was down there by himself, and he was coming home down 190, and a Greyhound bus come up behind him, and the bus driver had fallen asleep, mm. and he hit Diddy from behind, and they, he said that car turned over 
flip four times. Mm. And uh, so, of course, Greyhound had officials out there real quick. And uh, they took Daddy down to a car lot. During the war, so you couldn't get a brand new one. Mm. So they, he, they found a real nice 40 model Ford car. And uh, they give him that for that, and then they give him a hundred dollars for the the old wreck car. Somebody asked him, said, "Preacher, why didn't you sue him? You could really, I mean, you could get out anything." He said, "They were nice to me. Why should I sue them?" Yeah, that's good. So, so that's how we ended up with that party model Ford. Every once in a while, the the come in with what do you call it, skating rink thing. They'd throw up under a tarp, that big uh, tarp thing. I couldn't roller skate, but and my wife could really get with that roller skate. Yeah. She could get in them races and she could really go on them. Hmm. But me, I couldn't stand up hardly. Yeah. I thought the world of Dr. Graham. Remember any stories about him? He was quite a character. Well, uh, I can tell you one about me and him. I got, I was working in Houston there, and I don't, it was a nerve right, right back in here, and it, boy, when it would hit, it would just, boom, just like that, you know, so. Yeah. I, I, we went, took me to Dr. Graham there in Tomball, and uh, he told me, he said, you, we got to send you upstairs to, uh, what do you call that kind of doctor? Neuro, uh, Neurologist or something? Anyway, he said, he, you've got to go on up there. So he, he sent me up there, or had his nurse call up there. His, I think that was his daughter. It was his nerves, and she called up there to set up an appointment for me to come on up to see him, and they said it'll be about three days. Ooh, Dr. Graham threw a little fit. He got on that phone, and he called up there, and he said, you will see him right now. He's mm. hurting. Mm. you got to see him. Yeah. And they took me up there, and they saw me right then. Good. That's the way it was. Yeah.